recently saw some photographic evidence. Visual confirmation, yes. yeah, via my social media feed. I, I should have pulled it up, I just, we were just talking about it. But yeah. he, he's down in, uh, with, with the mouse, down south. Yes, if, Disney, if you don't know what that means. <laughs> but the funny thing about the picture that he had on was he had yeah. like a winter coat on. So I don't, I don't think he was planning on that being the case when he went down there. A couple but. weeks, because Lee is a huge Disney fan. He goes every single year. Before he left, I heard him one day being like, oh, what the, you got to be going to be in the king. 50s, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was like, look, it's 80 degrees this week, and then when I'm there, oh, no, yeah. I hate that for well, him. Hey, any vacation is a good vacation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so. that's true. So, yeah, we definitely miss him, but he'll be back um, next week for a couple of days, but then he'll be off again for a few more days. So, hey. It continues. In the new year, we will have a new Lee Cruz, and he'll be just raring to go. Exactly. All right, everybody, we um, have some hot topics to get to today. Um, let's get to them right now. Hot topics. Obviously, this first hot topic is on a, quite a serious note. It just happened mm -hmm. in the last little bit. It's the situation in Washington State. We do want to talk about it today because it is ongoing. Look at this. These are some of the first images that have been coming out. An Amtrak passenger train derailed just a little bit ago this morning. This is in Washington State, uh, apparently between Tacoma and Seattle. Multiple train cars fell off the overpass, as you can see, down onto Interstate 5. This is in Pierce County, Washington. First responders now calling this a mass casualty incident. All southbound lanes of this interstate are closed due to the derailment and the site stunned motorists who were heading to work. These cars fell down onto the interstate right into the middle of this morning rush hour there. Now this is terrifying. I mean, anybody that's a commuter, I mean, I've never regularly ridden a train, but I know right. folks that have that just say, you know, it's always in the back of your mind, what if this would happen? I mean, yeah. unfortunately, it hardly ever does, but something like that is just so, uh, just so terrifying. So. It is, and just... To imagine being in the train car and that being happening, but imagine yeah. if you're on the road and you're seeing this happen and mm -hmm. you're heading straight toward it. Well, it's just NBC was on. Uh, they had updates right before we went into the noon show today, yeah. so I'm sure that if any additional yeah. news comes out, we'll be cutting into programming as we get yeah, through the afternoon. Yeah, for sure. But definitely our hearts go out to that whole community, those people that were on there and friends and family of them. So, yeah, but again, they're calling us a mass casualty. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, here's something a little lighter. And yes. this is something that we rely on on a daily basis. Oh, my gosh. I was telling Tom about it the other day. I was so excited. I have a last-minute gift idea for you, and this is not sponsored, no promotion or anything. This is just from my little mind, and I think you need it this Christmas. <laughs> okay, Tom and I both work on The Morning Show, and I was telling him last week, He's got to get one of these. This is it? This is it. I just got one of these as a gift last week. This looks like a regular old alarm clock, uh -huh. clock radio. Oh, no, friends. This will change your world. It's a sleep machine, so it has all these 10 different sounds with it as well. But here's the kicker. It has that white part on the top. It's a light that mimics the sun. So... Like, apparently how it works, and here's the bad part. I got it the other day, but I haven't hooked it up yet. Oh, so you have one it of these. I have it. I got it. So this is what I want to tell you all, because this has just changed my world. Apparently, the the light, it turns on and mimics the sun, starts getting brighter 30 minutes before your alarm goes off to help kind of wake oh, you up in a more natural, eases you into soothing it, huh? way. Yes. Did you, did you see the name brand of that? Pile. The Pile. The I pile. immediately thought Gomer Pile. Maybe. And if they had an alarm clock and went shazam oh, and gosh. woke you up, that would be spectacular. I, do you even use an alarm clock? I use the one on my phone. Oh, do okay. you not even no. use one? I mean, you wake I, up naturally? I said it, but I've been on this shift so long yeah. that I have probably for the past five years, I wake up anywhere from a half an hour to 40 minutes before my alarm goes off. I can't remember that the last time it actually went off and I reached over and turned it off. Really? See, I'm yeah. a snooze queen. I'm, so I'm shocked I don't have a callus on my finger for being like snooze. Well, you get snooze. old and worn out like me and you'll be doing the exact same thing. Well, and I've always envied you for this. You said not only you wake up, but you've told me before, like when you do have your alarm go off, there's no like, do I lay here longer? You get it right up. Well, you right? don't, do you? No. You, how many times he hit snooze? Oh my gosh, so, so many. Until the button's broken. <laughs> yes, until like I have just the amount of time to literally get out of bed, roll in the shower, roll into my car, and oh, roll into man. work. Yeah. It's horrible. I hate it, but I do it every single day. It's so funny day. how different that is for people because it's never been a problem for me. I'm just up and... Well, and people's bodies are made differently. I yeah. can't. If I literally stood up right when my alarm went off, I'd fall over and bonk my head. I'm like so groggy <laughs> and dizzy. That. We need yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Haley's not here today. She had an accident this morning. Yeah, if, you, if you're mm. gone and Lee's gone, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> and I'm Tom, all alone. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, okay. the lights are finally back on after that epic power outage. Oh. I'm sure you heard about this down oh at the Atlanta airport over the weekend. The busiest airport in the world. The power was out for nearly 11 hours Sunday. More than 1,000 flights were canceled, but it 
wasn't turned back on until midnight last night. Of course, people have been on Twitter having their fun with the epic power outage. Here's one from a reporter in Atlanta who tweeted, breaking prayers for millennials with dead cell phones at Atlanta Hartsfield Airport and no way to charge up. They now know how life was in 1982. This is horrible, and I don't even want to admit this, but that was one of my first thoughts when I saw the outage. I was like, how are we going to charge our phones, though? It, what are it, we going to yeah, do? Yeah, it really is interesting. I mean, yeah. you think about how people will pass the time because your first instinct is just, you know, yeah, you're like, well, I guess I'll get on my phone. Yeah. Feeds, but I uh, know, yeah, you literally are going back to pre smartphone. whole lot of tiddlywinks and scrabble, I guess. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> I, have it with you, but. I was going to say, could people watch, but it's too dark to even do that. No, <laughs> so I mean, like, my, my wife got stranded when I was in the service in Baltimore. Really? During a snowstorm yeah. overnight, and this was like 93, 94, prior yeah. to all that. And uh, she said it was just uh, pretty horrendous, but, you know, a power it's outage. crazy. On top of that, if you're stranded in the airport with no juice to do anything or see anything, yeah, oh, ooh, good gravy. That's horrible. And yeah, I'm glad now that we can joke about it because yeah, I mean that really did stink. Not only, I mean, at least it's now and not like next week when it's actually Christmas. True. All these people stuck. Yeah. A thousand flights were canceled. Hopefully, they pulled that squirrel out of that transformer and then got everything. That's exactly right. Again. What if that was the cause? So many times that is the cause of these power outages. I mean, what if that was it? They say it was. A, they say it was a fire. They said it was I'm a big fire. Two substations. I mean, talk about bad luck. One was the substation that was like to their power. The next was the one that supplied their backup power. <laughs> the backup goes <laughs> like, down, you're in trouble. Rah, rah, no <laughs> power. Okay, this next story is one of those, when you read it, you're like, okay, what was he thinking? Nothing, apparently. Celebrity chef Mario Batali included a recipe with his sexual misconduct apology. Oh, how considerate. Oh, wow, <laughs> Mario. <laughs> yes, he was fired by ABC News last week and stepped down from his own company following sexual misconduct you allegations. You've got to be kidding me. No, this is real. I wish this was from The Onion. In his online newsletter, the former host of ABC's The Chew acknowledged many mistakes and uh -huh. apologized for disappointing his friends and family and okay. fans. Yeah. He also promised to work every day to regain the trust yeah. and respect of his fans. Then he added this. P.S. In case you're searching for a holiday-inspired breakfast, these pizza dough cinnamon rolls are a fan favorite. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, what? Mario? Mario. Talk oh, about being out of touch wow, and not grasping yeah. the seriousness of this, con like, this whole conversation. Have you the phrase tone deaf? Oh. Well, I'll tell you where you can put those cinnamon roll pizza doughs, okay? <laughs> Probably a lot of people saying that right Honestly. now. Interesting. I would I would love to know if anybody actually you know bookmarked that. Yeah, they're like I'm going to make these. That sounds I, pretty I, good, actually. I trust Mario. <laughs> wow. Well. No. Hey, I guess he, he at needs a new least, PR team. At least he apologized, right? That's true. He did apologize, and you know, it's, it, I don't know. There, I, there's a, there's an article out there I read about what he was up to with some of his other chef friends and. Good Lord. And if you want to try to not keep your lunch down, that would be a good read for you. Ooh, like some of the details of what he's accused yeah, of? Yeah, I kind of regretted reading it after I did. And I don't remember it was a New Yorker. I don't remember what it was. But it was well, now I've got to read it. Yeah. But I don't want to. That's the thing with all these. You hear the blanket statement, sexual misconduct or mm -hmm. sexual harassment. But and then you everybody, the you get into the details. It was like the Matt Lauer thing. It was like, oh, gosh, well, no. Yeah. And then you read the details, and it was like... Oh, no. Ugh, no. Like, oh, no. Well, now I've got to go read it. All right. Well, a customer at a diner in Washington State spread some major holiday cheer. This is an uplifting story. By leaving a $3,000 tip, uh, the staff was left, left in tears. Uh, the man who left the tips are regular, eats at the diner every weekend, sits in the same spot, orders the same meal. But this past Saturday, he left a giant tip on a $39 bill. He also left a note his mom cooked... In a diner just like theirs? Oh, yeah, his mom used to, and he used to wash dishes there when he was seven years old. So he's got some history. So they were dirt poor, and he hopes the money helps the staff have a better Christmas. So I don't know if they just split it up between all the servers. Yeah, I guess so. I think that was their plan, $3,000. And if this is a little diner, there can't be that many employees. No, so that's going to be a big chunk that for is, all these uh, people. That's a massive I love hearing stories like that. And I do, too. just goes to show you how, how long is that guy sitting in the corner and nobody paid him any, any yeah. attention aside from serving him. You never know. Yeah. You never know who, who you're dealing with. And it turns out, in some of the other reporting, they said it turns out this guy was like, you know, he was very unassuming, just ate through mm -hmm. every day. It turned out he was like the CEO of some huge yeah. senior living wow. company or something. So this guy's obviously very, very wealthy. So that $3,000, and then to hear that he was dirt poor when he was a kid, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, talking about paying it forward. He's been blessed and Good now for helping him. others. Good I for love them. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can do a royal family story because Lee's not here. Hey. Well, he doesn't want you doing. No, no, I do them. I force them in oh, there. Oh, he just complains but this, about as, I start, as soon as he sees it, he's like, I, I'm, I'm ambivalent. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's nice, but 
As a guy, I, yeah, it's not going to change it, your world. It, yeah. Well, it's going to change my world. Merry <laughs> Christmas from the royal the family, world. everyone. Look at this. Britain's <laughs> Prince William and his wife, Kate, and their adorable children. Kate, of course, who is pregnant right now with the couple's third child due in April. They released their brand new Christmas card. They release one every single year. And just like last year, Prince George and Princess Charlotte take center stage. So cute. And some other royal news this week. If you haven't heard, the wedding date has been set for William's younger brother, Prince Harry, and his fiance, American and Meghan Markle. It will be May 19th of next year in the historic St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. Pipe down, everyone, getting some sarcastic <laughs> yes back here in the, in the studio. So Kate is going to have another child. Kate is pregnant, when, yes. When, when's it due? Did I miss April. that? April. So it's in April, and the wedding with the is brother in is, is in May? Boy, they've got a... Uh, They've got a schedule ahead of them. They do. They? Oh my gosh! But unlike us, they've got staff and people to help them with things. I, think they, I think they have the means to handle it quite How well. How will they manage? <laughs> they may have to share a helicopter with another family. Hires extra help, yeah. I love the royal family. I think it's so <laughs> exciting and so fun. It's just a whole other world. But beautiful Christmas card. All right, twelve forty right now, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Those are today's hot topics. Hot All right, everybody, we have a ticket giveaway, and it's a Christmas-themed one. Yeah, these would be great stocking stuffers. We're giving away two tickets to the Newport Aquarium. That's always a fun visit. Be the 18th caller right now to enjoy Scuba Santa's Water Wonderland at the Newport Aquarium now through December 31st. Give us a call right now, 859-280-1818, for a chance to celebrate Holidays Under the Sea. We're going to announce a winner shortly. Yes, we are. Good luck, everybody. Call in right now. We'll have the winner before the end of the show. Stay with us. The holiday shopping continues right here on Live with Lee and Haley. Peggy's Gifts, a Lexington favorite, is with us right after this.